Actually, uh, my first job after LBG was Applied Research and Communication Fund, which is a spin-off, technology spin-off, uh, from the Center for the Study of Democracy, which was an NGO. This was my first job. And it was a combination of uh, educational development, further development, because it was a lot of research and a lot of um, um, in a way, it was a combination of a future development uh, of myself, practically, yes. So, it's a, it was a very special place for me. But I spent there only one year and a half, as far as I know. I, I, I had this passion uh, and it, it was a little bit, I don't know, if it was... Um, I was too young, too, too naive probably at that time and I wanted really to, to change my country, to contribute for the development of my country and I was uh, very committed that I will not work in the private sector, ever. Um, it was a romantic time of my career development and I really wanted to work for an NGO. But, uh, pr probably because I'm very pragmatic, I realized very quickly that I cannot change uh, my country or the world working for an NGO. And gradually formed an understanding, which I still keep and believe very strongly, that if you want to change uh, the environment, the ecosystem, the, even to improve somehow uh, your place of living and um, your country, the best thing is really to work in the private sector. Because uh, through private, private sector, you can practically bring value in, in the system, in, in the economy, and you can create value. And by creating value is an uh, immediate effect uh, on how you can change and contribute. And it's, and it's like this ever since I left the NGO. Uh, sector. This is not to say that the, I, I hope the, the, the colleagues and the young students in the LBG will still study political science and international relations, which I studied, but, um, but um, I think that we have a much, how to, how to say, much bigger role to play uh, when we are in the private sector. The most important thing which happened in my first job, actually my first job was in the AOBG and it was in the Office of Communications and Computing. I don't know if it still exists. It's, still, it's called OCC, also it, has, yes. it still has the same background. Yes, so OCC, OCC was my first job. I even studied at OCC before I joined the university, for one uh, immediately after school, uh, high school. And what happened is that my work study in uh, the Office of Computing and Communication, then my first job in the, um, in, uh, the um, non-governmental sector practically defined my, how to say, my, my strife and my thirst to work in one sector only, and this is technology. I've been working afterwards for um, Startup, actually Orbitel, at the time when I joined it was a startup. I worked there five years and it was, a, how to say, another very big learning, time of a lot of learning for me. So I worked for a telco, alternative telco, then I worked for a, for a, a vendor in the telecom industry, Ericsson, which completely reshaped and redefined my career understanding. Then I worked for a while in um, other um, technology companies like Alcatel, Lucent, uh, 
like HP, a system integrator, Indra. And then I joined SAP, which was like a circle of in the technology industry. And uh, I'm still in this industry, and I believe that this is the most interesting one. You'll be surprised, but in a way I'm even linking with my liberal arts education. Uh, and this is quite, uh, how to say, interesting input for all the students in the AOBG. Um, I believe that liberal arts uh, as an education gives the possibility to stay curious throughout your education and to be open to new careers and potential. I studied international relations and politics and I studied applied economics, which probably is a perfect uh, fit to work in a public sector or any governmental, intergovernmental institutions. Uh, and still, I am equipped with uh, basic skills of um, curiosity and um, really searching um, creativity in all of my decisions that I'm taking, even career-wise decisions. They were always not the traditional ones. Um, yes, it's not a traditional one to, to search a technology career uh, in a, with such a background, educational background, to be also a woman, but um, maybe when your perspectives of the world and what you would like to do later in your life are formed in a very liberal environment and open with open possibilities this is um, how you be we are you are prepared for this uh, technology industry and it's a it's a it's a great coloration that i think that uh, aubg could play a role in practically the development of the technology industry in bulgaria At the time when I was studying, uh, the, most, uh, the most important thing that happened to me is to meet um, probably the, the brightest minds of my generation. Um, and I, I was really fascinated to meet all these guys that I thought that are smarter than me, because all of them were very unique in what they were, they were representing and doing and studying. And the biggest gift that the university have given me is to, was really to meet very smart students, um, to find and develop friendships and to understand that uh, everybody could be unique in its own way and to really be in a way also humble in, in how I, I develop and approach um, work and, uh, and um, life. Um, to be, how to say, to be curious about people and uh, to be curious also about uh, the possibilities that I can find in every single job that I'm having. Uh, this open mindedness that I was telling you that the liberal arts is really, really um, supporting when you, when you go for this kind of education. But the biggest gift was really the, the whole environment and all the students that I have met and had the chance to interact with them for these four years. Fortunately, some of them remain my friends till now. We, we were a generation that, uh, that was prompted somehow to leave after we have graduated because we had a diploma, a diploma which was, um, how to say, which you can use everywhere. Uh, one of the most difficult decisions for me was to stay and to decide that um, I will uh, try to explore and to try to bring the best of me and the best of the environment um, and to enjoy what I'm doing here. And this was at the beginning, uh, probably the first few years, uh, this was the most uh, difficult difficult decision that I have taken. Eventually, it was never a decision. It was um, most probably a um, self-fulfilling uh, uh, prophecy that this is the best, the best, that I, the best possible decision that I, I should have taken um, by staying here. Because uh, I really believe that um, 
Staying in my home country gave me more possibilities to grow and to develop uh, than if I could have uh, left the country and uh, tried to develop somewhere else. And also gave me greater possibilities to contribute and to support uh, my community and uh, my country. So I'm happy with these most difficult decisions that uh, I have taken. But uh, on, the, on, the other on the other hand, uh, I was able to do this because the university gave me, um, um, develops this, this university, once you go through it, and this educational system gives you something very unique. And this is, um, to believe in to believe and to check your to check your choices, but also to believe in, in your in your choices, uh, and also a lot of hard work. Um, I'm I still remember uh, writing papers uh, midnight, last minute, but uh, knowing that I have to do it, or uh, let's say reading a textbook like this uh, in the final week. But this, these are these are great uh, great values uh, of uh, hard work and studying, which uh, eventually in life they pay off. The hard work and the belief in your own um, self. Um, maybe uh, now the, the the more mature I become and the more. Um, um, for, the more accustomed and, um, and accepting to the environment uh, and everything that is happening to me is becoming me very, um, very, how to say, very comfortable with uh, my choices, with my decisions, becoming very strong. And this is more or less, I think, my biggest accom accomplishment is becoming stronger on a personal level. Um, and yes, part of, part of this becoming stronger is also probably these four years spent in the AUBG. From my class, we are a few that have stayed, and this is um, this is a painful um, acknowledgement when you are doing it and when you are realizing that most of your friends are somewhere and you wait for the summer when they come back uh, so that you spend the summer somewhere. It's a great learning to see how their life has developed and how their careers have developed, how their dreams have happened or not. And um, it's a great learning also to understand it does not depend where you are in order to achieve what you want in life. And it's a great learning to continue to, to keep this friendship across the sea with my friends living in the States and uh, with my friends living um, in UK, for example. But at the same time, I'm extremely happy that as time passed by, I start to, I'm reconnecting with um, alumni um, and I'm reconnecting with uh, um, my friends from the university because we might have not kept relationship through, through the years, but eventually uh, we are now more or less doing one and the same. It doesn't matter where you are in the industry. And then you meet each other and then you understand that you have still the same values and probably this, and this is great because these values have not changed through the, through the years. And um, you have, uh, how to say, you have soulmates which are here, which are practically doing the same thing that you are doing, uh, trying to change a little bit, improve a little bit uh, where they are and uh, with uh, every single thing that they are doing. And yes, I'm reconnecting with a lot of, uh, with a lot of uh, graduates and alumni uh, from AUBG in the last few years. And it's a very natural process. I'm very happy that majority of them are even in my, in my industry, in the technology industry. Uh, and um, this is, uh, this is a, it's a, it's a, um, one more confirmation that uh, uh, AUBG is a great platform for people to realize their, their dreams and their potential in this um, changing world, even right now here. 
because uh, from many perspectives, if you are working in this industry nowadays, it doesn't matter where you are, if you are in the Silicon Valley or in Bulgaria, you have the same possibility as long as you do believe in your dreams and in what you're doing. Probably there are a lot, but I cannot now recall. Uh, but I remember so many nights when all of us were writing all the papers in the labs because uh, we didn't have uh, PCs at home, which is not true because I had, and even though I was not writing it at home. It was a very special fun to write your paper whole night just before submission in the morning. Um, and uh, it was a very special environment when everybody is trying to create something uh, in the middle of the night and when all the thoughts are gone, you go outside and you have a coffee and you go back in the lab and then you prepare your paper and you go and you put it under the door and you return it immediately after it's written late. <laughs> So, I have such, such memories. <laughs> Maybe mm, it's not advice, it is more coming from sharing my experience and what I, what I have learned is that um, every decision, even the most difficult ones, they pay off. Um, the, the more difficult, the more, the more is what comes afterwards. Um, to, be, to be happy with their choices and, um, and what they have chosen. To know that there, there are plenty of opportunities. They can always change their major <laughs> also in life. There is no decision that stays forever. Um, and um, they're living in very special times with where Really, they are very well prepared after coming um, from this university. They have a lot of choices, and the most, the, mo the big, the big, the biggest, the biggest gift that they will be given is this curiosity and this openness of how, of how they 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 grew in these years in the university. If they keep this for their life, it's a it's a it's a great gift. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, a great choice if you want to, to combine you know, two things. Uh, to, to, be, to be in Bulgaria, which, which is a very unique place, I can tell. Now that I'm uh, covering 10 different countries, I'm also having this experience of um, understanding very strongly our culture and what Bulgarians can bring. So it's a great experience to, to study in Bulgaria, or even if you're Bulgarian, to be here and at the same time to get um, in touch with uh, yourself and how yourself can grow through these tools and this platform which uh, liberal arts education is providing. It is a, it is a really a, a very nice mixture uh, of possibilities that, that is opening up for you. For me, the biggest strength is uh, to realize that all the strength that I have is coming from within and practically to understand that I don't have to make uh, comprom compromises, compromises, what is that? the way, compromises, with uh, compromises with uh, what uh, I would like to achieve and what I would like to, to share. Um, my biggest strength is that I never actually chase the career or I never was a career-oriented woman, no matter how and what is perceived from outside. My, my greatest uh, desire internally was really the desire to serve, to help, to support and to grow. And this right now is my biggest, um, strongest asset as a leader, because uh, within SAP, if I have to, comp to explain simply my job, I'm practically helping leaders 
uh, other leaders grow and helping um, people that are running businesses in other countries to be successful. Uh, this is a great, this is a great uh, job, but you can never realize and understand it and you can never even get it if you don't have this innate um, um, willingness and uh, drive to serve others and to help others. So maybe this is my biggest strength. Um, I'm uh, saying that I don't. Uh, it's m my work is more or less my mission, and I am saying that uh, I'm also said it through the interview that my job is to create value in the economy, and this is practically how majority of us here that are working are, are understanding our job. We are creating value in the uh, ecosystem by creating. Uh, and educating our customers uh, and our customers is the business, the businesses in Bulgaria to educate them and be ambitious about how they can grow their companies, how they can become more efficient, more prospective and get um, and become more competitive in, uh, in, in the market in Bulgaria and outside of Bulgaria and how they can achieve all of these through the technology and to understand the digital transformation as a, as a, as a phenomenon that is going to help them to make a leapfrog in the next stage of their company development. And that's why I think that uh, if you have such a goal, it, it, what you do is not a work. And uh, if you have such a mission and what you do, you can have a lot of um, 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 how to say, people that are willing to support you and uh, help you. And in this, I think that I can find my supporters everywhere or in the alumni community. And we are helping and supporting each other in, in this, um, uh, helping our country to digitally transform. Um, and I'm happy to also find alumni outside of Bulgaria, working in Romania, for example. Uh, doing the same, doing the same uh, uh, thing, thing. So it's a it's a process which is happening and in which yes, a lot of a lot of alumni are participating. I see uh, many of the alumni now working in the technology sector, working in uh, in um, this uh, new um, ecosystem that is created around accelerators and uh, uh, startup community. I am a strong supporter of uh, this, this process because I believe this could be a great differentiator for Bulgaria in the region to become a um, point of attraction of, of young talents, not only from Bulgaria but in the, in the Balkans. Uh, and this is a, a mission in which uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of um, AUBGers. Um, the, the easiest and honest uh, answer is I don't have free time <laughs> because, <laughs> because I have three kids and I have a very balanced life, you know, because it is so uh, tense uh, at work and then it's becoming so tense at home with every single uh, person in my family wanting my attention and my time. So yes, maybe I am in this special time in my life that uh, I don't have a lot of time uh, for myself, but I'm enjoying it because I'm so busy um, that uh, practically I don't have time to think about um, and um, creating problems for myself. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I have a quite, <laughs> a quite, uh, quite interesting day. You know, it starts very early and it ends very late. Thank you.